we are back and today we are talking all about sustainable ethical basics. Hello, how are you? Great to see you again. Hope you're well. Maybe this is actually for the first time. And if that is the case, great to meet you for the first time. My name is Fanula. I'm all about sustainable, mainly predominantly secondhand fashion, trying to get people to start kind of thinking more about their clothes and their fashion and where they are all coming from and why it's important. So I've got a couple of other videos in this same vein on my channel if you are new and you want to go check them out. But maybe you're just here to learn about sustainable, ethical basics and see how I got on with two brands in particular that are causing a lot of waves in the scene. Before we get into any of that, however, my disclaimer that I always put out, the most sustainable and ethical thing that you have is already in your wardrobe. It's the clothes you already have. When I talk about these brands, I'm not saying it in a way that suggests that, you know, you need to buy them. They're an absolute must need. If you have gorgeous, beautiful, basic pieces at home already in your wardrobe that you're still in love with, incredible. The issue was that I didn't anymore, really. I wanted to invest in something that was high quality and that I knew would last me. And also, again, if you're unfamiliar with my journey, I'm really actually trying to not shop fast fashion, which is why I went for these brands. How and ever, I also have some really good secondhand options that I got on Depop, which I know can be a little bit hit or miss. You might have an app, depending on where you're watching this, in another country, Vestiaire might be a good one too. Or not Vestiaire, we have that here. Vinted is the one I'm thinking of. I've some good secondhand options for like basic kind of bodysuits. And it's just to kind of get your mind ticking, get the mind chugging along to get you thinking about, you know, other places to shop. That it isn't just the automatic default where it's like, okay, I'll go to Zara, I'll go to Penny's. The basics are out there. You just have to look for them a little bit harder or in the case of the ones I'm about to show you, I might have spent a little bit more money, unfortunately. Anyway, let's get into it. So the two brands we're talking about are AYM, or potentially AIM, I'm not 100% sure how that's pronounced, and Tala. So let's start with AYM. AYM clothing is made in the UK. A lot of the stuff is generally made to order on pre-order. They use sustainable FSC packaging. This means that it uses a range of materials, including recycled cardboard, biodegradable mailing bags, and then every piece of packaging can be recycled or added to the compost as a biodegradable material. And they also use garment bags to ensure the clothing is protected when it's being stored before shipment. Also ensures the garments are kept safe during transportation. Uh, they've also partnered up with something that I wasn't familiar with before reading this now. It's called Sojo. It's a clothing alterations and repair platform for people and businesses. And they offer bespoke tailoring and repairs on a selection of their items. I'm not sure if it applies to this one, but maybe just one to know. The piece that I got is the York bamboo tank and it's in the color natural. So it's when I show it to you, it's like an off white. It cost me 59 great British pounds, which roughly, depending on when you watch this, but as of right now, I think it's 67 euro or like 67.99. Yeah, 67.99. Not cheap. Definitely the more expensive of the two. But I'm going to be honest, I think that reflects in the item itself. When I was shopping for basics, I really wanted just like neutral colors. A lot of my wardrobe is very loud patterns, colors, which I love. But for practicality and for work and stuff, sometimes it just makes more sense that I have pieces like this. So I'm going to try it on for you in a sec. But here it is fresh out the dryer so she's still she's still a little bit wrinkled she hasn't been ironed okay but like this is what it looks like i don't know if you can tell from this video but it's like it's thick she thick right she she's a th she's a thick lady okay she's not thick in the sense that you'd be like this isn't a vest at all this isn't wearable as a vest cute you can see the tag there aym you've got that gorgeous double lining it's not very long i will say it might come up a little bit shorter on some people but i find it fine i'm five foot three for reference and i don't know if the camera is going to pick this up but this isn't white this is like an off white i wouldn't go as far as saying it's a cream this is a medium uh, i'm gonna check what sizes they do offer but there's a good bit of stretch in this so i think this could kind of i don't want to say it could fit anyone because that's not true um but i would say i'm a larger medium than a small medium if that makes sense so it comes in three colors it comes in the natural as i've showed you it comes in black and it comes in like a taupe color and the sizing it offers is xs s m l xl and 2xl so like room for improvement there i will say when i opened this i was just i was a gog at the quality like it was it's like nothing i've ever felt before and it was just exactly what I wanted. Kind of dressy enough that you could dress it up, obviously, or it's casual enough that you could kind of wear it with, with whatever. 
it's washed really well so far. I've had this since like last summer. So I have washed this a good couple of times and it is washing like very, very well, I have to say. Now, before we try on that, let's get on to our next top, which is Tala. I bought the 365 Racerback High Neck Vest in Coconut Milk. This is a true white, I will say. And this cost me, with shipping, 34.19 Great British Pounds, which works out roughly, again, Euro-wise, 39 euro. So like significantly cheaper there already, at least 30 quid difference, right? Tala was founded by fitness influencer Grace Beverly, and it's kind of all been built on the foundation that she wanted to create like athleisure wear that was sustainable, but not very, very expensive, right? And they've branched out into kind of dresses and not stuff that you work out in, stuff like this, basically. Their collections are made with recycled and naturally sourced materials. 365, the line that I've actually bought from, is made from wood pulp fibers, uh, sourced from sustainably managed forests, all of which are certified under strict guidelines. I think there was a couple of questions around them initially when they came out because I, I don't know, people are skeptical around influencer brand, brands and stuff and I suppose they have a right to be. But even looking at their website now, they have a lot, like a scroll, scroll, scroll worthy amount of info around the people they work with, the ethical factories, their, why they ship the way they do, all their updates on how they've changed their packaging, like they removed packaging slips from all website orders in 2022 and they've all the stats around there in terms of renewable energy, circularity, accessibility. It's predominantly female workforce across everything. They also like clearly state all the materials that they do use and why they use them. One of my issues with Tala was how frequently they release launches. And they've kind of answered that on their website as well. So they release collections that are data driven. So it's in response to what people have already purchased and what they know is going to be popular. So they know it's going to sell and it's not going to end up in the bin essentially, or they're not going to end up with a lot of stock that isn't sold. So their justification is when we are releasing a new collection, we buy in low quantity to start to test interest before ordering more later in the year, according to what we learn. And they gave examples with specific collections. And they've basically said that like 50% of their customers each month are new. So they also have to cater for them. So look, that might be a reason why you might not want to go with them, but I actually am pretty happy with how transparent they've been and I think it's really good to see them doing this considerably more than some other brands including AYM to be honest like again 30 euro is a big difference when it comes to a top how do the tops compare we'll get into it again these are not ironed bear with me life is too short to iron in my opinion but this is the other vest this is the Tala vest it's the 365 Racerback high neck vest in coconut milk as I said that's what it looks like this is the back. So obviously there, there are slightly different styles. I appreciate that. And they're also slightly different colors. Like this is, this is white. They're like coconut milk, whatever. This is white. Michael Scott in the office, this is a white. I didn't particularly mind that because again, it gives me more flexibility with my wardrobe. So I do really like them, I have to say. Now, I don't know if you can see just from this video and even from like the movement in the vest, the material is a lot, a lot thinner. I'm gonna get this out before I try them on, right? I have no issue, nips out, whatever. I'm all for that. I'm not getting them out for this video because that would be a very different type of video, right? But if you are larger chested or you're just not comfortable with having your nipples out for whatever reason, you are gonna have to wear a bra with this. And then because it's a racer back, your bra straps are gonna be showing. Again, not the biggest issue in the world. I regularly wear my bra straps just showing, who cares, whatever. But something to bear in mind. This, because it's double lined, you can 100% go without a bra in this. Again, maybe not for bigger chested or you're self-conscious of that, but I have no issue going braless in this. Don't have a massive issue going braless in this either, but it is just more obvious and it's something to bear in mind. And I will say this is washing well, but it is kind of already starting to bobble. And I know I can get one of those shaver things, but I mean, it's... I kind of don't want to have to either. I don't have to buy another thing to like sort my clothes, but I will because it means I'll keep them and circular and my wardrobe and all that. I'm going to see if I can show you on camera the bobbling. Maybe you won't see it. Maybe you will. It's not like terrible. And full disclosure, I bought this around the same time as the AYM, but I actually, we moved house in between and I couldn't find this. So I only really started wearing this from October. So I've washed it less than this, but I just feel like it hasn't washed as well, if I'm being completely honest. I have a screenshots and like images of the packaging that Tala came in as well and like the tags. So we'll have that on screen to show you. I don't think I have the AYM anymore. 
Shall we try them on? Let's try them on. This is the AYM. It's so smooth. It just fits my body really well. It's so soft, like however many washes it's been through. I didn't think I'd like this cut, but it's actually really nice and I find it really flattering. I'm not wearing a bra here. If you do wear a bra, like a, a triangle bra, you can't see it underneath. I just said I'd show you for illustrative purposes. Again, hoping I'm not about to get absolutely banned, but yeah. It's the neckline, the sleeves. I'm obsessed with it, incredible purchase. Let me show you how the Tala kind of compares on. This is my favorite, you've probably already guessed that beforehand, but I do think Tala is a good option if you're kind of weighing up your own options. Again, not doing this because I'm ashamed, but just to illustrate points, and also I'm afraid of YouTube and the algorithm. Anyway, this is Tala. She is a lot thinner on, slightly like tighter to the body because it's thinner. Well, it's not even that it's actually tighter to the body, but it's just that it's thinner. If you want to wear a bra with this, just because of where it cuts up, you might consider like a racer back. Don't care about the straps. Absolutely do it curlies, you do you. And that was AYM. Which do you think looks the nicest? Let me know. If I had to compare them, I love them both for different reasons, but I do ultimately think AYM just has my heart. I think you cannot compare the quality. I think the cut is really good. It's washing a little bit better than this. I suppose where I would dot marks is that it's not a white, and because it's a little bit off white, uh, whereas this is the true white. What I love about this, Tala, obviously more affordable. You kind of have a slightly different cut. So in some ways it's kind of slightly dressier, I would say. Um, but where I where it loses marks for me is it's definitely not washing as well as AOIM. And it just is that little bit thinner. You do notice the difference in the materials and how it wears and how it fits on. Let me show you the second hand options if that's something you want to explore as well. I had them to hand, where are they? I actually got a beautiful two set of bodysuits on Depop this time last year as well. This is just plain black, button tight at the bottom and it's kind of racer back again, but it has the thing where it's kind of double lined around the chest. I don't know if you can see that. So it's like this material everywhere else, but then at the chest, it's just the double lined. So you could wear it without a bra. I don't very regularly. So that's what it looks like. It's just a Zara bodysuit. You'd be surprised how often people are selling these. This is a medium. And then I also got it with a nude one. Also a medium. Or is this clean? Yeah, it is. These were brand new. These still had tags on them, I'm pretty sure. This also has the double lining, if you can see over the chest. So if you wanted a little bit more, not really support, but like coverage, you have that in them. I got them secondhand. I bought the two of those bodysuits for 17 euro. So much cheaper than the ethical, the new ones that I bought. So it really just proves that it is worth having a look secondhand sometime, most of the time, all the time. I hope this was helpful. I hope this has informed some of your future purchases. Let me know if you have any other questions, if there's anything else you'd like to see here around fashion sustainability, secondhand fashion. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.